Hi guys, so in this video, we're going to talk about injury to the recurrent laryngeal nerve. So as you know, there are two types of injuries, unilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve in injury and bilateral. That's when the recurrent laryngeal nerve on both sides gets injured. So first we'll talk about unilateral, then bilateral, and then we'll go through a few images. So firstly, unilateral injury is usually asymptomatic. It may present with mild voice changes, which will over time improve. So because there'll be overcompensation from the other functioning side, over time, the voice changes will improve. Sometimes, uh, you know, it's described as tiredness of voice and very rarely it could be associated with a kind of dry cough called bovine cough. Usually unilateral RLN palsy is conservatively managed. If there's no improvement in a few weeks, you can also send them for speech therapy. But generally unilateral is not too dangerous and it's conservatively managed. Coming to bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy. So this is a little more uh, complicated and this can be life threatening because the, as we know, the recurrent laryngeal nerve sub supplies the posterior cricoarytenoid, which is the only abductor. Abductor means the muscle that splits the vocal cords. The recurrent laryngeal nerve supplies the posterior cricoarytenoid, which is the only abductor of the vocal cords. And if the abduction of the vocal cord is lost, they're stuck in the median or paramedian position and thus the inlet is blocked and this can lead to asphyxia and obviously it can also lead to aphonia in inability to speak inability to breathe so asphyxia strider and aphonia you can see here dyspnea or asphyxia strider and aphonia are features of bilateral rln injury because it gets stuck in the median or paramedian position so how do you manage it so as we said if there's a unilateral injury it's usually conservatively managed but a bilateral injury cannot be conservatively managed so there is two broad ways of managing firstly a bilateral injury requires an emergency tracheostomy so whenever you re realize that there is a bilateral vocal cord injury or sorry bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve injury and the vocal cords are not opening anymore then you need to do an emergency tracheostomy to maintain the airway to make sure the patient is able to breathe and also to prevent aspiration and the definitive treatment includes lateralization of vocal cords. So like I said, the vocal cords are stuck in the median or paramedian position. So you lateralize them, thus opening the inlet, opening the larynx up, okay? Because you know the air or the wind pass through the larynx. So you open up the larynx. So the first method of fixing it is by surgeries that lateralize the vocal cord. This can be open surgery or endoscopic surgery. There's something, something called thyroplasty where you modify the thyroid uh, cartilage, not the thyroid gland, but the thyroid cartilage such that again, you split the vocal cords and they also also cordectomy where you cut one side uh, of one, one vocal cord. So again, like I told you in bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy, the uh, cords can be either stuck in the median or paramedian position and this can block the laryngeal inlet completely leading to difficulty in breathing or asphyxia. Okay, and sometimes you can remember if, if ELN, the external laryngeal nerve and the RLN both are injured, then the cords get stuck in the intermediate position or the cadaveric position. So the ELN plus RLN is actually safer than bilateral recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy. Thank you.